So for today's video, we're going to be doing a pet unboxing for you guys. Uh, it's actually a pet that I've been wanting for a very long time, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So make sure you stay tuned to find out what it is. Welcome back to the channel guys, it's your boy Josue here from Josue's Exotics and if you haven't seen one of my videos before, I make videos about reptile and amphibian care and also share my experiences that I have with my animals with you guys. So if you'd like to learn more information about reptiles and amphibians, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below so that way you can keep up with all my latest content. So the animal that I have for you guys today is going to be one of my most favorite amphibians of them all, the poison dart frog or more commonly known with the scientific name Dendrobates azureus is what I believe is called or at, least, or at least the one that I got. These guys primarily live in Central and South America in the jungles areas so these guys are used to a more tropical and more human environment which are going to be some of the more complications as to keeping these guys in captivity and we'll get into that in a little while. Another cool fact about these guys, the majority of the different morphs or different kinds there are, they're all going to be very, very brightly colored. So they're going to make very good display pets. Uh, normally they'll be black and yellow or blue or red or they can come in pretty much all different kinds of colors. Uh, the reason being for this is the fact that uh, naturally in the wild they are a poisonous frog, I guess you should say. Hence the name poison dart frog. The thing is with these is that they're only poisonous while they're still in the wild. It's because of the prey items that they eat naturally in the wild that causes them to produce the toxins in their skin that makes them actually poisonous. So with us keeping these frogs in captivity makes it a whole lot better for them because we can actually handle them and we're not going to have to worry about getting sick or any other little things like that. So the terrarium that I chose to go for these little guys is the Exotana Nano uh, Tall Aquarium or Terrarium. I bought it off of Amazon. I caught it on sale for like around 35 bucks. I'll put the link in the description down below so that way you guys can go check it out if you would like and get one for yourself. But Exoterra makes really, really good enclosures for reptiles and amphibians in general and I would always recommend you get one of these. But sometimes it can be pricey. I think this little terrarium even though it's an 8 by 8 by 12 I believe. Uh, the only thing with this is, is it was like 75 bucks normal price, so, but with it being half off, I figured why not buy it. I mentioned before these guys are going to need a tropical setup. Since they do come from Central and South America, it's normally a really humid environment, so the exoterras are really good for that. But uh, we're going to put them in a bioactive setup, that way we can make sure you have enough oxygen and moisture and other things like that. Uh, actually in the terrarium for these guys since they require such high humidity requirements and we'll get into that later in the video. Alright so for the first step we gotta go ahead and get our terrarium all unboxed and everything like that and go ahead and get some drainage rocks put in. So the cool thing about these Exoterra aquariums and terrariums is the fact that they have two openings that you can go through. Uh, the top has two locking tabs where the whole top just comes off and on the front, they also have a front opening lid where you can flip down this little switch and you can open it up. So for this, we're probably just going to use this one up front and we can put the drainage rocks in right through here and it'll make it a whole lot easier. Alright, so after we got our drainage layer in, we need to go ahead and put our barrier in so we can go ahead and put our substrate and we can go ahead and get our frog in his home and get some plants in here. Alright, so after we got all our plants and substrate and all that stuff in, it's time to actually go and put the frog in and then we'll talk about how we're going to feed him and all the other little small things you do to keep these guys alive. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and take this little guy out.
So as far as lighting goes for these little guys, you don't really need anything special. So pretty much all I have is just going to be a little regular, little, very light that you can get from Lowe's uh, with an LED in it just for the plants. And you can just plug it right on up to anything that you already have and keep rolling the timer. Uh, as far as temperature goes with these guys, uh, you want to kind of keep these guys relatively cooler than you would think. Generally, the temperature for these guys is around 70, 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit cooler than you would, like I said, than you would expect. But with these guys, they actually live on the forest floor in the jungle, and which that, that's going to be a little bit cooler than it's going to be higher up or you know where we're at, where it's, it could be 80, 90 degrees with a humidity around 80, 90 percent or something like that. Uh, also, with that being said, as far as humidity goes for these guys. They, they're probably going to like it as close to 100% humidity as you can get it. Uh, as low as 80% would be the lower limits of what you should probably keep them at. But around 90% is a good median range for at least for humidity for that. Uh, what I'm using is just like a little Petco uh, like, stick on humidity gauge. It's just something small that way I can work on building this terrarium up some more. Uh, especially with it being as small as it is, he's not going to be in here too long, but it'll definitely hold him for a little while. As far as food, uh, while I was at Petco, I picked up a little bit of these flightless fruit flies. Uh, that's going to be the majority of their diet since they're such a very small frog. There's not going to be a whole lot that you can actually feed them. Uh, except for maybe like very small crickets or something like that once they get a little bit bigger. As far as when you're actually going to find these guys, they're probably going to be sold to you as juveniles or maybe babies. So they're going to still be, like I said, relatively small. As far as water goes for these guys, I would say you don't really need a water bowl. Uh, these particular types of frogs, they get a lot of their moisture and water absorption through their skin, so they depend on that, and that's another reason why the humidity has to be so high. But if you want to put a water bowl in there, you can. It would also help but keep the humidity up actually in the terrarium, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to put you one in there, which is probably what I'm going to do for this one, uh, which is another reason why you use live plants, and that's why they thrive better in an actual bioactive setup versus just putting them in there with plastic plants and regular old aquarium and things like that because these extra tears actually hold in moisture pretty well all right so if you enjoyed today's video make sure you subscribe to the channel down below that way you can keep up with all the new latest videos i got coming out and if you guys want to see some more of my videos i'll post some more videos on the right side of the screen over here that way you guys can go check those out and thanks for watching